إله الكون قد أسلمت لك يا إله الكون قد In Mecca, where he was born, he was known as Al-Amin, the most trustworthy. And Al-Amin, even though his enemies had stole from his followers, killed his followers, tortured his followers, confiscated their properties, he could have done what others do in warfare. He could have then confiscated their wealth that he was holding. But when they entered his home to kill him, they did not find him there. Instead, they found his cousin Ali, radiallahu anhu. And he left Ali in his house when he escaped for only one reason, so that Ali, radiallahu anhu, could give back to them the valuables, the money, that they had entrusted with him years ago. Can you imagine a man who is hated for his message, opposed for his message, sought to be killed, yet those people who hated the message and sought to kill him, they never thought to come and say, give us back our money, because still they trusted him because they knew there was no one with more trust in Mecca than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was that pious, he was that shy, he was that gentle in his speech, yet it was said that when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was met on a battlefield, he was ferocious in defending Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when the companions of the Prophet وسلم, used to look for him on the battlefield, they said, Wallahi, we found him in the middle of the enemies, fighting. And they said, we used to seek the protection of his person. We used to hide behind the Prophet وسلم, on the battlefield. He was such a warrior and statesman on the battlefield, commanding and fighting for the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But once he was off the battlefield, his eyes were downcast and he was speaking softly and he was gentle and he was warm and he was sacred and soft and caring and crying. The Prophet وسلم, never, he never wore silk, he never wore gold, he never dressed arrogantly, he never dressed ostentatiously, he never walked proud, arrogant, he never appeared in front of people like he was a king or an emperor, even when he was the absolute ruler. This was a man receiving over the period of 23 years on a daily basis. Intermittently, he was receiving the 6,626 verses of the Quran over a period of 23 years. Receiving the revelation. And when it came, they said his body shook. His body shook, and if someone's hand or leg was under his, it felt as if their hand or their leg was being crushed from the revelation coming down. And the Prophet وسلم, sweated, and his body shivered, so that the fools among the unbelievers said he had epilepsy because they could not explain what was happening to this man. I told you earlier that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said had he sent this Quran down on a mountain, it would have crushed a mountain. So what do you think it would have done to the heart of a human being? 
but Allah prepared the Prophet him as a vessel for it. But when the revelation came down, they could see it. Yet the Prophet him was also during the course of that day feeding the poor, visiting the sick, discharging the army, acting as a statesman, acting as an arbiter, talking to the people, addressing the women, giving out the zakat, sewing his clothes, washing his house, shopping for the food, doing all the things that you and I do, and at night, standing in prayer for four or five hours at a time, and in the day, fighting the battles, discharging the armies, giving the ahkam and the rulings, explaining the Quran, instructing the people in behavior. How could a man do all of that and stand four or five hours at night at one time? The Prophet wasalam, on one occasion, he went to a place called Taif to give his message to those people. Taif is a high place, maybe 60 miles, 50 miles from Mecca, and he walked there. And when he arrived there, the nobles of that city, the nobles of that city sent out the meaner elements of urchins and bums and destitute people to throw rocks at the Prophet and spit at him. And he bled and he cried and he sat down on the stump of a tree or on a rock and he was questioning himself why I was not successful in talking to these people. What is it that I'm doing? I'm inefficient. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Jibreel alayhi salam to say to him, O oh Muhammad, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Salam alayk. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to you, Salam alaykum Muhammad. And he has ordered me to command the angels of the mountains on the two sides of these people to come together like that and crush those people if you want. The Prophet said, no, I don't want that. Let them go. Maybe one day they will be Muslims. Today, Taif is one of the most beautiful places where the flowers grow, where there are no flowers anywhere else. And everyone in Taif today is Muslim. This was the manner of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was a mercy even to those that opposed him. So that when he had the chance, when he had the chance for revenge, when he had a chance for reprisal, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never took revenge, he never took reprisals. There's not a person in the whole of history that can compare with Muhammad Not a Confucius, not Guantama Buddha, not Alexander the Great, not Bonaparte Napoleon, not Julius Caesar, nor Constantine, not Mahatma, not Mahatma Gandhi, not King Richard or King Ferdinand, not Winston Churchill, not Charles Darwin, not Mao Zedong, nor Deng Xiaoping, nor Karl Marx, not Albert Einstein, not Martin Luther or Martin Luther King Jr., not George Washington, not George, not John F. Kennedy, and certainly not Bill Clinton. Not Tony Blair, nor John Howard, nor George Bush Sr. or George Bush Jr. Not you, not me, not our parents, nor our grandparents, 
nor any of our ancestors can match this man Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You 